Entering this, the final race of the 2012 TM Master Cup Series season, there are four drivers that can walk away with the TM Master Cup Series Drivers' Championship. Leonard Roderick has won the championship four times. He's won here at Decatur five different times. Luciano Salvarol, second in the championship, is a hot new prospect. Arto Kekkonen in third has won the Kyala Grand Prix before, and Adrian Devereaux in fourth won the championship here last year. All four of these drivers have a very realistic shot of taking home the crown, as only 11 points separate first through fourth. Going throughout the rest of the top 20 in the championship, everyone else is thinking about either winning this race or next season. And here's a map of the Decatur Raceway, as you see right here. 15 turn course, we're going to see a lot of passing down through the snake. The Girard Strait, there's a hotel there, the Girard Hotel. Tyson's Bend, you see a lot of passing there, it's a lot like a speedway corner. Then up the hill, there's been some passing up there as well. And maybe if you're brave down there in turn 12 or down at the end of Farmer's Strait. But for the last time this season, Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. As the norm for special events in the TM Master Cup Series, 42 cars will start this race. Let's go through the grid from the back to the front. In 42nd position is Chuck Bloomers out of North Carolina driving his own number 898 car. Bloomers, a gentleman driver, will see what he can do in his first start, and few expected him to qualify. On the inside of row 21 is Trevin Terrell driving for Scuderia Tutino, a team that has never made it out of pre-qualifying for special events. This is, of course, Tutino's first special event. On the outside of row 20 is Dan Lechleiter in the Lechleiter Motorsports Lycoy. On his inside is Ben Huron in the Abbey Engineering uh, Huntley. This is the first to start for Huntley in this series, and with this beautiful paint job, let's see how they can do. On the inside, outside of row 19 is Joe Olenek in the Matthews Motorsports car. Olenek runs in the ASCC. On his inside is Tommy Aryanian in the iColts car number 66. The outside of row 18 is Zach Duff giving Xenos its farewell in car number 5. And on his inside is Mark Blackwell driving for Unit 11 Motorsports in this very unique paint job. On the outside of row 17 is car 17, Lewis Kingston in the Nomoto, the only Nomoto in the field. And on his inside is his former teammate, Zelda Ashby, giving Owen DeGarmo its last Master Cup Series start. On the outside of row 16 is Alessandro Rossini, driving for Rossini Sports. Good to have Rossini back in the field after a long hiatus. On the inside of row 16 is Kevin Dwyer in car number 72, his last start for Team Star USA. On the outside of row 15, Damian Snyder is back in car number 87. That's a team car to Danny Sobman, who didn't make the field. On his inside, Friedrich Jaeger driving the Vernstrom. Jaeger, of course, a German touring car legend. On the outside of row 14, Mika Passanen, the Carriala Grand Prix hero, in the Majestic Motorsports car number 12, their last start. On the inside of row 14, Tony Durbin, 2007 Master Cup Series champion, also driving in Team Sorry USA's last start for the foreseeable future. On the outside of row 13, Peter Short. Four times he hoisted the Formula A championship. Now he runs for Black Diamond Racing. On his inside is Greg Woodard in car number 41, who lives not very far away from this track. On the outside of row 12 is former Formula Roos champion Yevgeny Kuznetsov in car number 80 for Roos Autosport. And on his inside, Frank Azure in car number 460, the FAC Motorsports Omeka. On the outside of row number 11 is Marcus Leonard in car triple nine. He will drive for his own team next year. Uh, FPO will come to the series, and on his inside, Melanie Cleveno, this year's TM Europe champion. The Swiss driver is the only Swiss to win a Master Cup Series race. On the outside of row 10 is Lev Vladimirovich Polzin driving the Toyati, and on his inside, Dale Roswell in Black Diamond Racing's Freedom for Palestine Car 22. On the outside of row 9 is Yami Notenchi. She'll move over to the Clockwork Racing entry next year, and Yulina Sova in car number 8 for Katsev is on the inside of row 9. Leonard Roderick is the furthest down of the championship contenders in car number four. And on his inside, Scott Bates, who won this race last year in the 88 EFR car. On the outside of row seven is Andreas Laporta, his second ever Master Cup Series start in the Black Star Motorsports car. And his teammate is on the inside of row seven, Larson Jensen, in car 99. The outside of row six is Chris Johans driving the Schaefer Sapphire in his final start for Michelin Sons. And on his inside, Alan Hodges driving for his own team. Hodges' two teammates, Luciano Savarol in car number three, is one of the championship contenders. And on Luciano's inside is Ian Cooper, who has the track record here still in car triple seven. And on the outside of row four is the final of the Hodges Walter cars, Adrian Devereaux, last year's champion in car number one. And on the inside of row four, My uh, Michael Sykes in car number 44, a British touring car legend. On the outside of row three is Yuho Cavela in car number 04, the third of the flash racing cars. On the, outs on, on the inside of row 3, Matthias Taub in car number 10, a former winner of the Carriala Grand Prix. The outside of row 2 is Davina Henton, believe it or not, the only Volpe in the field, 
And on her inside is Arto Kekkonen, who was quickest in the final practice session. California's Brian Sendak is on the outside of the front row, and the third of the guests are Richter cars, car number 90, and taking out the Delano Pole Award, a complete long shot pole sitter, Brandon LaRoe, car number 24, driving for Afterburner Motorsports. A very small team did everything they could to seal their position in the field here on pole day. And you can see here a lot of very big names failing to qualify. As I mentioned earlier, uh, Packer Carroll and uh, Ali Collado, the other two Volpes, missed the show. And you can see that, uh, well, uh, there is a lot of very big names not on the grid there, as you saw that uh, rather long list. It was, I believe, the largest um, uh, entry list in Master Cup Series history as Brandon LaRoe in car 24 leads the field down to take the green. 36 laps here at Decatur. And we are green. Brandon LaRoe leads the field down the front straightaway as they come now down, down, down towards turn one. The snake. Someone's trying to be a hero in the back. LaRoe slides a bit wide. Brian Sendak gets through. Sendak into the lead and coming out of the snake. Davina Henton up to second. Terrible start for the 24 car as LaRoe is dropping back a little bit. Sendak trying to edge a lead. Looks like everyone got through there safely. And rather sanely, Davina Henton has moved up into second in the Volpe. Kavela is third. Kekin in fourth. Laro is going to drop down. Looks like to fifth. Adrian Devereaux made a great start in car number one. He's up to sixth. And Matthias Taub uh, sits right behind Adrian Devereaux there in seventh. So, as you're going back a little bit further back, here's Ben Huron making uh, Huntley's first start in the series in the uh, rather nice looking 007 car. A uh, bit of a ragged start there in the back. Looks like everything really got a court, like got jammed up. Lewis Kingston, the 17 car, went off track. Oh, there's contact! Kingston and oh, Huron make contact! And Ben Huron goes tumbling through the air in a spectacular collision with Kingston. Coming up the hill, a spectacular crash between cars 17 and 007. A frightening incident, but both drivers uh, were able to get out of their cars under their own power. Uh, Huron, after uh, some time, I should point out. But he was able to climb out of the car by his own accord. There was, a, of course, a local yellow thrown around here. But a uh, huge tragedy for both these guys. Ben Hearn was rather shaken up, but he was not uh, seriously hurt there. Uh, so very scary incident there on lap one. Adrian Devereaux, car number one. He has five wins this year, but he has to make up the most ground to win the championship. Now, I know 11 points may not sound like much, and uh, clearly he has every intention of going for it, but uh, Devereaux must finish ahead of all of his title contenders and uh, considering the point spreads winning the race is pretty much going to be his best shot. Davina Henton is clearly on a mission to prove that she wa that she should not have been sacked from Volpe. That's kind of been her mission the whole second half of the year but this is her last run for Volpe and uh, considering that her teammates didn't make the field I think uh, she's already uh, point already taken there. Brian Sendak hits the curve and the snake slides off in the 90 car. So Brian Sendak really pushing hard now. Henton is closing in in car number six. Keep an eye on Henton. She won the last race at British Columbia in the HLR circuit, which is fairly similar here to the Decatur Raceway. So I think you're going to have to keep an eye out for Henton and Yuho Kavela right here. Ron Borderton, this yellow 04 car. Kavela, we don't know what he's doing next year, uh, but uh, Henton sliding in a bit wide in Tyson's bend, and Kavela looks like he's going to move up to second. The Finn is really out to prove that he deserves a place in this series or in TM Lights, but he is clearly trying his hardest. We're on board now with Arto Kekkonen, who's sitting back there in the fourth position, trying to get inside his countrymen. And uh, Kevela not making life easy for Kekkonen there. As you see, Adrian Devereaux now beginning to lose a bit of ground to Arto Kekkonen's other teammate, Matthias Taub. Now, Taub, uh, I think if Taub was a, bit of, a better teammate, he'd probably let uh, Arto by right there. Leonid Roderick is back in 14th place. I um, don't I don't think Roderick is going to uh, exactly come flying through the field and storm to the front as quickly as possible. He's won this race five times, so I would expect him to come to the front when it matters the most. Car 12 in trouble already. Mika Pasanen, car number 12 in Majestic Motorsports entry, is already having a puncture on that car. He brings it in at the end of the first lap. Lynx will take over that team for next season. Peter Short in car number 19 has reported some problems with this car, and you can tell he's fallen way behind the rest of the field. Mechanical Gremlins have really been the, the uh, former world champion's uh, problem so far in this series. Nomoto is reportedly interested in signing him alongside Lewis Kingston, and uh, wouldn't that be an interesting driver pairing of Peter Short and Lewis Kingston driving for star team Nomoto? Here's Arto Kakinen, car number 9, trying to work around Yuho Kavela. Uh, Kavela goes by, Kakinen swings it a bit wide, Adrian Devereaux does likewise. 
And on his inside comes Brandon LaRoe, and the number 10 car that is his teammate, Matthias Taub. And I'm a little surprised Taub hasn't just hasn't moved over and uh, let Kakinen go past him. Uh, so, uh, clearly no team orders over here at Gessler, even though uh, there was a lot of speculation that they would use team orders in order to uh, get Kakinen uh, further up the field. Running order you see there on the left side. Here's looking back through the towards the back of the field at Joe Olenek in the uh, Matthews Motorsports car, the 06 entry. Trevin Terrell is back there, and so is Alessandro Rossini. None of these guys qualified all that well, and uh, looking uh, doesn't look like any of these guys are really going forward all that quickly either. Uh, I thought we would take a little bit of time to peek in on how some of the uh, Decatur one-offs are doing. Oh, Matthias Taub roughing up the uh, the 10 car a little bit, or of uh, excuse me, roughing over the 24. And uh, LaRoe in the 24 car moving over. Oh, no. Oh, they made contact. A pole sitter's off. Brandon LaRoe off the track in the 24 car. And he's into the wall at Tyson's Bend. And I don't think that Matthias Taub did anything wrong in that little exchange. So I think that LaRoe just sort of moved over on Taub and took himself off the road. Here's Damian Snyder and Tony Durbin. Whoa, these guys have still got a bit of history together. Tony Durbin and Damian Snyder. Oh, this look out! Look out! Oh, Kevin Dwyer. So Team Star USA, and this is their last race as a full-time team, and their two cars have collided with each other. Ah, uh, Kevin Dwyer, none too happy over the radio. Tony Durbin and Damian Snyder drove when they drove for Team Star USA. They didn't get along all that well. Ah, uh, but uh, Snyder and Durbin, what were they? What were they doing over there? Ah, uh, so uh, clearly Tony Durbin's got uh, some things he'd like to say to Snyder probably after the race. Alessandro Rossini in this 512 car making his first start in his own car. I wonder if we'll be seeing Rossini back in the Master Cup Series full time with this car, but uh, this car maybe could it be called the Tutino TR3? And could we see Rossini driving uh, under the Scuderia Tutino banner with this car? Possibly. That's been the uh, speculation in the paddock actually, that we'll see uh, Rossini back in the series uh, with his own design badged as a Tutino. The Hodges Walter boys are on the move. Uh, Adrian Devereaux and Luciano Savarol battling for fifth place. Alan Hodges not too far behind them. Uh, Alan Hodges did tell me he didn't really care which one of them ended up taking out the championship, so he said there are no team orders over here uh, with the Hod with the Hodges Walter cars, and that he would not tell them to uh, hold station if they ended up being one two at any at uh, the end of the race. So anyways, Luciano Savarol takes the fifth place from Adrian Devereaux. Devereaux looks like he's going to be content to sit back there in sixth for a little while. I'm not sure why he would do that. Here is Yuho Kivela in the 04 car, riding behind Davina Henton. Now there are some people suggesting that Kivela is um, uh, going to be used to jam up, Art, to jam up uh, Leonid Roderick's title contenders. Flash Racing has not commented to, the, uh, to those questions in the press. Uh, Roderick, there you see Roderick is slowly making his way through the field. I think he'll be at the business end of the field when it matters. Kevela in the 04 car, uh, well, I wouldn't exactly expect him to uh, hold station of Roderick's behind him, let's say. Yamino Tenshi is running back in 18th place. She's holding off team, uh, team Europe champion Melanie Cleveno and Marcus Leonard. Uh, we'll be seeing Yamino Tenshi in the clockwork uh, car for 2013. I don't know how many races we'll be seeing it in, but... Uh, I've heard some stories that they're going for one or two promoters options, possibly more than that. And that's a very, very radical design over there, the, uh, the Clockwork Midnight car. On board, Yelena Sova is a on lap six. She uh, did a good move inside Scott Bates there. These two roughing each other up just a little bit. Coming onto the hotel. And I, th oh, here we go. Bates and Nasova both off the track. Oh, no. And Nasova's rolled the car over. A spectacular crash in lap six has sent both drivers out of the race. Uh, Nasova and Bates are able to get out of their cars. There's what's left of the 88 car. Nasova in the eight uh, car, they both got out of their cars. Uh, they were taken to the care center, but uh, both were, thankfully, uh, they were not injured in that uh, rather massive shunt they had over there. Here is uh, looking at Roswell, that is Yevgeny Kuznetsov and Marcus Leonard. Kuznetsov in the 80 car makes contact with Leonard and Roswell in three wide. Uh, well, it can work, but Leonard, oh, that's not really a good place for Leonard to be in. This is Zenos' last race, and uh, Leonard's last race with them, obviously. 
Yuho Cavela in car number 04 is chasing down Brian Sendak for the lead of the race. There's Brandon LaRoe in the 24 car leaving the pits. And you can see the Cavela trying to close in on Sendak, but Sendak just good enough out of the snake to keep the 04 car behind him. And here comes LaRoe back onto the track. That is Davina Henson back in third in uh, car number 6, Arto Kakinen still in fourth. Here is Arto Kakinen, uh, by the way. Michael Sykes has moved up to fifth. There's Luciano Savarol. Adrian Devereaux has dropped back a little bit. And Matthias Taub closing in on him as they uh, don't really... Oh, Michael Sykes roughing up the 24 car a little bit. I don't really know why he's doing that, but uh, doesn't look like anyone's really having too many problems getting around Brandon LaRoe. Uh, good etiquette back there. Lexar Motorsports has got their two cars in 12th and 13th, and usually we only see these cars both here and Cariala, and uh, they usually come with... Uh, Pretty uh, high, uh, some fairly high sponsors on their cars, a lot of high dollar sponsors, but they've never qualified both their cars for the same race um, before, and uh, here they've done that for the first time. They got both cars into the race, and they look pretty quick, so uh, Black Storm Motorsports uh, could be a sleeper for, uh, or rather could be a championship, a spoiler actually with the way they're going, because th these two cars have been very, very fast. Laporta there in the 98 car being held up a bit by Brandon LaRoe, who uh, moved over to one side of the track. Uh, to let everyone go by. And here's Lev Vladimirovich Polzin in the Toyati, uh, not being very nice to Brandon LaRoe, I should point out. But the, uh, the Toyati guys have really been having a, a pretty strong week. Usually we see Toyatis uh, smoking on the side of the track. Back uh, with the one-off guys, Joe Olenek, Trevin Terrell having a pretty good battle for the oh-so-important 32nd place, but I'd have to point out this is one of the best battles on the racetrack. So, Olenek and Terrell putting on a show in two very underpowered cars that, frankly, I'm surprised qualified for this race. But uh, they've done a very good job, and especially the, uh, the uh, guys over at Tutina who were overjoyed just to start this race. Here's Alan Hodges in the 13 car, wily old veteran there, as uh, Hodges trying to make a move on the, in on the inside of Taubin Roderick. Oh, uh, things better than that. That could have been a rather massive crash. Uh, Hodges doesn't really want to... Uh, play championship spoiler like that. Didn't want to take Roderick out by accident. On board with Luciano Savaral in car number three. The very emotional Brazilian often lets his emotions get the best of him. Um, but really, uh, Savaral uh, having a pretty good drive so far. He's on the inside of Michael Sykes. That is Davina Henton in the six. So a great run out of the snake for Luciano. As you can see, Adrian Devereaux is shadowing him as he... Uh, Comes through the field. Savarol in this three car is really fast right now. There's Arto Kakin in the nine. Throws a bit of a block on Savarol. Oh, contact! Luciano Savarol got into the back of the nine car of Arto Kakin and both of them fighting for the title. I hesitate to say whether or not that was on purpose or not. I'm not sure about that, but uh, Carl Richter's guys were certainly crying foul over that one. Uh, Luciano Savarol, car number three. I'm not entirely sure he was in the wrong there. I think Arto tried to pull over on him a little too late, and Savaral had the uh, nose of his car just, just barely there. We're on lap 10. Brian Sendak, as you can see, is still leading the race. As you can see uh, in the top 10, Ian Cooper in the 777 car. Uh, the two Blackstorm cars, 11th, or, uh, 12th and 13th, sorry. The Toyati still 15th. Melanie Clevino working her way up the field. And you can see uh, Frank Azure, you have Jenny Kuznetsov, but further back, Chuck Bloomers has made his way up to 30th place in the 898 car. 37 cars are still running. Every one of them is on the lead lap. Peter Short in the 19 car currently runs last of everyone still running. Now, here we are with the um, car number 90 of Brian Sendak leading the race. Whoa, he slides wide. Here comes Luciano Savarol back to the or up to the lead of the race. So Luciano Savarol in car number three. Great move in the snake gets by both Kavela and Sendak, neither of whom I think saw that one coming. Adrian Devereaux back in uh, seventh right now, trying to hold off Ian Cooper, and you can see how hard he has to push it in order to keep that triple seven car behind him because Cooper will stick his nose in there um, and pull off the rather brave, reckless maneuvers sometimes. Luciano Savaral will win the title if he wins the race. This is a 36 lap race, and uh, he's got a ways to go. Here's Chris Johans in the 64 car. Slides a bit wide in the snake. Bit of bumper tag there with Matthias Taub. No harm, no foul. Here's Leonid Roderick as Adrian Devereaux gets held up behind Peter Short, who's just gone a lap down in the 19 car. Roderick on the inside of Ian Cooper gets around him, uses the back marker. Peter Short to get around the 777 car. 
That might be the only way you're going to get around the Great Wall that's known as the 777 car. He's not one of the easiest people to get around. Cooper not making Roderick's life easy at all. And he's moved... Oh, Cooper, I think, may have moved over on him there a little bit. I uh, may have squeezed him off the track almost. So, you can see that Cooper's... Uh, let uh, the top car is getting well, well away from um, Roderick and Devereaux. Here's Davina Henson in car number six. And here is Luciano Savarol pushing it a bit wide, coming out of the snake. So Savarol may have opened the door for Brian Sendak to take the lead back. But Savarol is holding him off so far as Yuho Cavela uh, is in the uh, 04 car. He uh, sits back in third. Here's Arto Kakinen. It's a better exit from the snake here. And. Uh, Oh, Cavella moves over a bit on the 9 car, but coming under the hotel, here they come to- Oh, they made contact! Cavella has gotten into Arto Kekkonen and turned him off the course! So, remember now, Yuho Cavella is Roderick's teammate, and all of- There's been a lot of suggestions that Cavella could be used in- to do exactly this, but I'm not in- But it looked to me as if Cavella had been racing Kekkonen a bit hard, and that Arto Kekkonen may have actually squeezed Kivela out. We're going to have a look here on board Davina Henton. Kivela goes off the track, moves over a bit on the 9 car, sort of daunting him, daunting him a little bit, and then Arto, it looks like Arto moved over on the 04 car. So I have, I take that statement back. Arto Kekkonen moved over on Kivela. I don't know why Arto Kekkonen felt the need to kind of rough up Kivela a little bit like that, especially when he has a title on the line. Kivela doesn't. Lap 13, Luciano Savarol leads the field in for pit stops. The first uh, pit cycle, Brian Sendak behind him. Davina Henton stays out an extra lap, and you may have noticed on the onboard, some left front damage on the Volpe. Henton playing it very, very, uh, playing a very gutsy game by staying out this extra lap. That is Michael Sykes in the 44 car with her. As we now go, contact between the two. Henton and Sykes, contact. As we're now looking to see some of the cars that did pit. Uh, on lap 13 along with Luciano Savarol. We're watching Melanie Cleveno. You have Jenny Kuznetsov in, Roswell in. I saw the FAC car in. Looking back, you see Yuho Cavella, the 04 car. Lots of damage to this car. Uh, Flash Racing and Gessler Richter were not uh, terribly happy with each other about this collision because, uh, well, anyways. Here's Davina Henton pitting on lap 14. Oh, look out, look out, look out, look out. Henton slid it very wide and pit in. Adrian Devereaux looked back, uh, also pitting on this pit cycle as well, but uh, Henton almost wiped it out and almost hit the pit wall. Now here's uh, Kevin Dwyer, who pitted on lap 14. Comes out into the side of the 66 car. I think that's the 66 car Varianian. And, and there is some major damage to the car number 72 that's going to take him out of the race. Uh, Kevin Dwyer said that it was definitely his team's fault for that collision, and uh, but he said that he believed he should not have been released when he was. He felt that that was an unsafe release, and that was his team's fault, and I have to agree with him. And here is Davina Henton leading the race. Roderick has moved up to second. Roderick wins the title as of right now. If the race ended right now, Johan's in third. There you see the Hodges Walter boys. Fourth and fifth. There's their almost contact there. Uh, Brian Sendak has dropped way back, all the way down to seventh. Going a bit further back, you'll notice Ariani is still in the top 20. Damian Snyder and Greg Woodard are beginning to work their way through the field. Kevin Dwyer, of course, car 72, uh, went out of the race from 21st. Michael Sykes is back up in 15th. He's going to loop it around with Yamito Tenchi. Contact with the 25 since the 44 around. His season has been nothing but bad luck. The Welshman will stay with this team. However, this team will be rebranded as the American Launch Energy Racing Team. This is the farthest Vernstrom has ever made it in a TM Master Cup Series race to date. Friedrich Jaeger is running in 25th place, and as you might have just seen there, he got roughed up a little bit by Tony Durbin in the 33 car, who, uh, to be quite honest, is uh, not exactly making too many friends out there, but Durbin, always a little bit of a rough rider. Uh, here is Chuck Bloomers, who's worked his way up to uh, 20th. A uh, bit of a long shot qualifier. Uh, I like the thing, the neat little thing the sponsor did with this car, with the number, putting it, uh, use the actual sponsor logo as the number. I thought that was uh, very, very clever of them to do that. Lap 17, here is Arto Kekin in car number 9, as he's beginning to work his way on the inside of Melanie Cleveno, and he's squeezing Cleveno off the road, and Cleveno gets, makes contact with the 9, and they're both going into the wall! Alan Hodges into it, Arto, more drama for Arto Kekkonen, and this time, once again, I don't know what's gotten with Arto Kekkonen today, but... Uh, 
I don't know how he thought that pass would stick. Because uh, clearly the 74 car was still there. And Cleveno's... Where's Cleveno going to go? The grass? There's... That's a... I don't know. I just don't see why or how Arto Kakinen could have thought that one was going to stick. I think the title pressure has... The pressure of the uh, the earlier contact with Cavella has clearly gotten to him. And... Oh, Pasanen's in with trouble again. Well, not exactly been... Uh, dream season for Majestic Motorsports. In fact, it's been a bit of a disaster, and clearly that's continuing. But, um, <clears throat> as Davina Henton continues to lead the race, uh, I have to say, I think Arjo Kekkonen has got, just all the collisions he's had uh, today, have just sort of built up, and, uh, I think he's just sort of cracked into the pressure a little bit. But needless to say, that 9 car is still running, and I don't see too much damage to it, as Roderick makes a move for the lead in car number 4. Try gets around Davina Henton in the Volpe. And Henton goes off the track a little bit. Adrian Devereaux sits back in fourth. Luciano Savarol in fifth. These two cars try to hunt down third place Chris Johans. The uh, Chris Johans, of course, leaving that team at the end of the year. We're not sure where he's going. We believe he's headed off to Manticore Engineering. Uh, Devereaux and Savarol. These two cars are fairly quick, and I believe they will cl uh, catch Johans fairly soon. Yep, Jenny Kuznetsov, one of the rising new stars of the series, sits back in an amazing 17th place. The Russian driver is able to uh, bring, his, bring some of his own sponsorship to the series, and I think that's that's not exactly a bad thing. Kuznetsov driving, uh, will drive for Cats of Engineering next year, as he now has a look on Damian Snyder in the 87 car. Snyder, of course, who famously dyed his hair for a sponsor, believe it or not, not too long ago. Uh, he's uh, sort of lost that color ever since, but uh, maybe if uh, he gets more outings like this, he could uh, be encouraged to do that again. As I mentioned earlier, Adrian Devereaux and Luciano Savarol are closing in on the Schaefer Sapphire of Chris Johans. They are visibly closer than they were before. We believe Schaefer will follow Johans to whatever team he goes to. Roderick in the in the four car, still leading, breaks a bit late, hits the curb on the one on the inside of the snake, and he slid a bit wide. Here comes Henton, and Henton to the lead of the race in car number six. Uh, Davina Henton from England takes over the lead. Larson Jensen, the 99 car, dropped way back down the order. A disastrous pit stop cost him dearly. As with Mika Pasanen, who is back on the track, but he's a few laps down. So, a disastrous uh, exit for the series from Mika Pasanen. Oh, no! The Toyotis off! Vlad Vladimirovich pulls in. Looks like got hooked off the track by Andreas Laporta. And that's hugely disappointing for the Toyati guys who are having a very, very good run today. Oh, that's a shame for them. Here's Adrian Devereaux, car number one, alongside Chris Johans, down Farmers, as they come now towards the uh, towards the last couple of corners and onto the Grand Straight. Here is Devereaux on the inside of Johans. He's go is he going to get him? Johans gets, swings it a bit wide, he gets a better run off? No, not really. As you can see here, the, the way these last couple of corners are set up, TM Master Cup Series cars can actually run side by side down this front straightaway. Now, here's the Ian Cooper car. Whoa, as Hodges goes off the track. There have been a lot of suggestions that the number on this car could change for 2013. Uh, some people think that this car could carry the fo number 44 next year. We'll have to see what happens there, but he's running in 8th place. This has been one of his better tracks, and uh, he's carrying the banner for Team EFR after Scott Bates crashed out earlier. Here is the battle for 27th place between Marcus Leonard, Tommy Aryanian, Mark Blackwell, Alessandro Rossini, and Joe Olenek. So, a lot of one-off cars, and Marcus Leonard and Peter Short, the lap car in there. Got a pretty good battle going on back here for, uh, well, it's not even really a, a points paying position, but they're putting on a good show regardless. Here is Tony Durbin in car number 33, and he said he's bringing his car into the pits this lap. And Tony Durbin is into the pits in car number 33, and he slid it a bit wide. Oh! Tony Durbin into the pit wall! The end of the pit wall! He came in too hard and braked too late, and he took himself out! Oh, dunce cap for that one. Anyway, Larson Jensen is 32nd place, one lap uh, behind the leaders. It's amazing he uh, didn't lose that much time. But as you see, Adrian Devereaux made effective use of the back marker to get around Chris Johans, who I think is trying to punt the 99 car off the road at this point. I can't imagine Johans is terribly happy with Larson Jensen. Swings it wide to get a better run. Yep! Chris Johans has hooked the 99 car, and he's turned him off the course. You can, you can clearly tell that Chris Johans is not terribly happy about losing third. Jensen keeps it, almost, almost keeps it off the wall. 
but a great car control by the Englishman to keep that car out of harm's way. Lap 24, Davina Henson still leads the race. Roderick is still second. Devereaux up to third. As the and you can see Arto Kakinen is still in the top 10. And oh, contact between Roderick and Henson. They're clearly fighting for this one for all they're worth. And Henson keeps the lead. But here is Evgeny Kuznetsov in the 80 car. He's up to 14th place. Kuznetsov, who will drive for Katzen next year in place of Jose Luis Martinez. Because uh, he's been having a very strong run, and Roos Autosport is giving this car that uh, uh, MAO3R their best run to date. And here is the 50 car of Trevin Terrell, who's done an amazing job to get a Tutino into a special event. They've never made it past pre-qualifying, let alone the main qualifier to get in to a special event before. Uh, we've had some reported brake problems on Dan Lechleiter in the 110 car. Uh, he was running in 23rd place, and Frank Azure, who inherited 23rd place, also suffered brake problems. And he uh, had to retire uh, from the race one lap after Lechleiter did. So that's two cars that were running in the midfield eliminated due to brake issues. Hmm. A lot of hard braking here at this track. Doesn't surprise me that there would be some brake problems. Here is Davina Henton and Lena Roderick as they work around the lap car of Tommy Ariani in the 66 car, who I think has been off the track. And oh, more contact! Henton and Roderick really going at it now. And this is this is just amazing stuff up front. Henton and Roderick leaning on each other for all they're worth. And here is Luciano Savarol has moved his way up to fourth. Savarol slides it wide. Johans takes the spot back. So Chris Johans in the 64 car works his way back up to fourth. Henton pits on lap 25. I don't think there will be any fuel dramas uh, for the rest of the race. So I think everyone who is pitting now will be good on fuel. As you see, Savaral has stayed out next to your lap. And I, I can't make out who that is in the background. It's a Gessler, though. It's one of the silver Gesslers. I think that was Sendak because, yes, Arto Kekkonen has pitted. And so is Andreas Laporta. Snyder is in. Kuznetsov is in. Chuck Bloomer's in the 898 card. There's been some... Uh, oh, yes, Chuck Bloomer's out from 16th. That's a huge disappointment because Bloomers is having a fantastic run. And here is uh, Matthias Taub sliding it wide, entering the uh, the pits. And now, as Matthias Taub is looking for his pit stall. Oh, contact! With, oh no, Kavala's running to the back of Henton's crew! So you hook Kavala, contact with the crew for the six car, and pit lane dramas about Ahoy! So I think we're going to have an investigation for that one post-race. But Adrian Devereaux has beat Chris Johans off the pit lane. Now, where is Roderick? There is Kivela. The 04 car is slowing. So Kivela's uh, day, I think, is, is uh, coming to a merciful end after a great start. Now, where is Roderick and Henton? Here is Devereaux coming by the front straight. Roderick is in the background. He's beaten both Roderick and Henton off the pit lane. Where is Savaral? He's be it looks like he's going to beat Savaral off the pit lane. But Luciano Savaral in car number three, I think, will have... Uh, better tires to be able to run Adrian Devereaux down with. It's not that big of a gap between the Hodges Walter boys as we enter the final stretch of this race and the final uh, uh, final stint of the 2012 season as Adrian Devereaux leads the race. R Leonid Roderick running in third. Brian Sendak and Chris Johans battle for fourth. Johans on the inside of Sendak here. And now so they're side by side going down to the hotel and there's contact. Johans and Sendak get together. Johans goes off. Sendak's car is slowing. Brian Sendak looks like he's trying to make sure if everything's okay. But Chris Johans in the 64, here he comes. Are we going to see some payback? Yep, there we go. I saw that one coming from a mile away. Chris Johans hunts Brian Sendak off the road. And Sendak's day is done. Brian Sendak in the 90 car was absolutely furious after this one. But you can see here, the 90 and the 64 are clearly roughing each other up under the hotel. Johans loses this one, but he gets con keeps control of that car. Brings it through the grass, and while Sendak's checking to make sure his car is okay, Johans just comes flying up here, runs the 90 car, and pretty much puts Sendak in a no-win position and wipes him out of the race. The stewards wanted both these guys in the hauler at the end of this one. A fan favorite, Marcus Leonard in the 999 car, also out with mechanical problems, ending, Z ending his run with Xenos. And here is the uh, CRL Modified with Matthias Taub as the driver. As you can see, he's running back in 11th place. And after those shenanigans with Chris Johans and Brian Sendak, that's moved Ian Cooper up to fourth. But you can see Roderick is in third. And he is actually catching Luciano Savarol. 
but is he able going to be able to make up all that distance going a bit further back Damian Snyder in the top 10 in the uh, car number 87 Snyder clearly showing he still got what it takes to run at the front in this series right ahead of him Zelda Ashby and Andreas Laporta as they battle for eight Ashby having a very uh, very strong showing today but just hasn't really been getting a whole lot of attention and that might be a good thing because uh, Ashby in this 55 car clearly going to uh, going to cl uh, going to impress people when she goes over to drive for FPO next year she'll be teamed up with Sealander Ebenezer Quiggles jr. who uh, in a week is going to be fighting for the Arla championship so we'll have to see what uh, he can do over there with FPO Here's Ian Cooper, and he is breaking a bit late. That's a bit late. Oh, he's going to throw fourth away. Oh, no. Arto Kekkinen is right there to pounce as Chris Johans moves up to fourth. Cooper back to fifth. But is he going to lose that to Kekkinen in the nine car? I think he is because Kekkinen is gone by him, I believe. Leonard Roderick sitting in a very solid third place. He's reeling in the Hodges-Walter cars, but I'm not sure it'll be enough to catch them. Adrian Devereaux and Luciano Savarol have a sizable lead over Roderick, who has won this race, as I mentioned before, five times. Leonard Roderick, car number four, will move over to Volpe Racing Team next year, and they haven't exactly had a great 2012 season uh, by their standards. At any rate, Luciano Savarol has caught Adrian Devereaux, but can he make the move stick? Adrian Devereaux has made this car very wide. Now, here we go. Battle between teammates. Alan Hodges told these guys no team orders, so we've got a race in our hands, and whoever wins the race between these two guys is, is going to win the championship. No pressure there at all. So anyways, in the closing stages of this one, Adrian Devereaux holding off Luciano Savarol. Nobody since Leonid Roderick has repeated as Master Cup Series Drivers Champion. Roderick, of course, did it at the beginning of this millennium. Adrian Devereaux looking to become uh, the first driver in a while to do that in the Haas manufacturing Paul Morel Altair for Hodges Walter Racing that very distinctive paint job uh, that's uh, been on this car for uh, quite some time uh, Devereaux in car number one trying to hold off his teammate who's not exactly an easy person to keep at bay and here is Michael Sykes who's moved his way past Damian Snyder and into 10th place clearly making a strong showing uh, despite that contact earlier with Yamino Tenshi which uh, the stewards rule was just a racing incident so Michael Sykes the Welshman trying to turn his luck around he's having a strong run today and a great showing here at the end of the season when he could certainly use a bit of a morale boost I believe he'll have Chris Davenport as a teammate next year back up with the leaders as Luciano Savarol starts his 32nd lap of this 36 lap race Adrian Devereaux right in front of him and Devereaux has slid it wide he slid it wide Devereaux's going off the course he's rejoined but Luciano Savarol is now right there to pounce. Devereaux, car number one, is defending the lead of the race. As you see now, Roderick right behind there, waiting to see if any big mistake will take these two cars out of contention. And then Roderick could walk into his fifth Master Cup championship, but Savarol now hoping that Devereaux makes another mistake so that he can pounce, take the lead, and potentially the championship. Devereaux, car number one, though, appears to be quicker on the second half of the course as they come across a slow car. That's Alessandro Rossini in his own car. They've had a bit of problems with that car in the pits. And Devereaux making a pretty bold move. He's kept, he puts uh, Rossini in between himself and Savarol. That's what he needs to do. He needs some of these. He actually might need a bit of help from back markers because Luciano Savarol appears to be quicker and is not able to get around the 512 car as quickly as Devereaux has. And now there's Roderick in the background. That orange number four. Just waiting to see if any mishap will take these two cars take these two cars out and give him a ch his fifth Master Cup title as Devereaux hits the curb he slid it wide again I don't think he can afford to do that too many other uh, too many times because Luciano is right there and he's even closer than before Savarol in car number three really giving Devereaux a hard time here in car number one with just a few laps to go Devereaux not able to get it as low as he was through Tyson's bend it's a lot like a speed a corner on a regular speedway track as they come up the hill again next lap and you see Devereaux not quite, doesn't hit the curb this time, but he slid it even wider. So clearly the handling is uh, going away on this one car. And he is giving it everything he's got to keep Luciano behind him. But Savarol, I, I think maybe breaking a bit earlier for the snake. And uh, that actually might be hurting him a little bit, I believe. But Devereaux now continuing to hold him off. 
as uh, this number one, Hoskar, is holding, is doing a great job of keeping Luciano in his mirrors and uh, not uh, ahead of him. Anyway, Devereaux taking every opportunity uh, for Savarol to pass him out of his hands as uh, he is doing, he's trying to hold on for a second title in a row. Savarol even closer than before as they come now down, as they come through the garbage dump on the uh, this wide sweeping corner here. As Adrian Devereaux, the Frenchman, Luciano Savarol, the Brazilian, great friends off the track, but on the track, they are fighting for the championship. Savarol hoping to take his first. Devereaux hoping to take his second in a row. And behind them, Roderick may not be able to catch them in time. Whoever wins this race wins the championship. I don't think I need to say that enough times. I don't think I've ever seen a situation like this happen in quite some time as the final lap of the season has begun. Luciano Savarol, car number three, has got one more shot. Devereaux slid it wide. But he's, is he going to be able to get her? No, not quickly enough. He's got to make the move somewhere else. And that is, of course, the area where Luciano has been most comfortable passing cars. Devereaux again sliding it a bit wider through Tyson's bend. And I don't think Luciano is going to have a shot coming up the hill unless Devereaux really skates that thing around. And I'm beginning to see that one car look awful tail happy. Luciano Savarol, the Brazilian, desperately trying to get away around his good friend and teammate. But Devereaux now beginning to stretch it. They exit Farmer straight away and begin to make their way around the final couple of corners to finish off the 2012 season. Adrian Devereaux got it on Luciano Savarol. And as they come down to take the checkered flag, Adrian Devereaux in car number one is going to carry that number as he wins at Decatur and steals the championship in the final race of the season by taking it from his teammate who finished just two-tenths of a second behind him. And there you have it. Unofficially, Adrian Devereaux is the 2012 TM Master Cup Series Drivers' Champion, winning it for the second year in a row in thrilling fashion. Roderick comes home in third. Chris Johans, we're not sure what will happen to him after this race, but if Johans is given a time penalty, then that means that the, that the four title contenders finish one, two, three, four in the race. And that would also move Ian Cooper back up into the top five. Davina Henton ends her season strongly for Volpe, Alan Hodges, Great one-off show there. And you also see Zelda Ashby in the 55 car. Didn't talk about Ashby at all. Started 33rd. Came home to finish 8th. Great job there by the DeGarmo team. Andres Laporta also in the top 10. For Blackstorm Motorsports, his best result to date. Damian Snyder, Matthias Taub in the modified. Melanie Cleveno didn't really have an eventful day. You have Jenny Kuznetsov in the 80 car at a pretty good showing. Zach Duff gets Zenos' last points in their last race. Dale Roswell in the 22 car. Greg Woodard and Vernstrom takes home the final point with Friedrich Jaeger completing all 36 laps. 44 seconds adrift, but we'll be seeing them back because I believe they'll be in with Jaeger for the Independence Trophy. Mark Blackwell finished in 21st. He was a, quite a ways back from Jaeger, so uh, the Vernstrom guy secured that final point by a fair margin. And here's how the Drivers' Championship ended. Adrian Devereaux beating Leonard Roderick by 9 points in the championship, Luciano Savarol by 10, and Arto Kekkonen by 28. Now, had Luciano Savarol gotten around Adrian Devereaux, that would have meant that Devereaux didn't, would not have gotten the lap leader bonus, even if Savarol had led just one lap. So that's how critical that uh, defense of the lead was for Adrian Devereaux. Chris Johans, uh, I think if, he's gonna, if he gets a time penalty, he may lose fifth in the championship to Davina Henton. Now, I'd like to point out that Davina Henton uh, took nine top tens, eight DNFs. I believe that led the series in the DNFs category. Uh, Leonid Roderick led the series in top tens on 13. However, Luciano Savarol led, with led the series in top fives with nine. A few other interesting notes, Adrian Devereaux took the most wins, six, by far more than anyone else. Uh, Arto Kekkonen had three, and no one else had more than two. And we, as we look down in the championship results a bit further, Marcus Leonard and Lewis Kingston uh, were able to take their uh, underpowered cars almost into the top ten in the championship. Great runs by both of those guys this season. Yuli Nasova uh, took a win, of course, in the Katsiv in one of the most thrilling finishes I've ever seen, uh, barring this one, of course. Ian Cooper managed to finish inside the top 20 in the championship, despite not getting uh, finishing in the top five at all this season. Uh, and Melanie Cleveno finishes 18th in the championship, only started 10 of 21 races this season. Rookie of the Year has not yet been determined because that might hinge on what happens to Chris Johans. 
in this race. However, I believe Melanie Cleveno, Packer Carroll, and Kevin Dwyer could be the favorites to take out Rookie of the Year for 2012. Speaking of Melanie Cleveno, she has been signed to drive for the Lynx team for 2013, so it'll be interesting to see what Cleveno can do alongside Davina Henton over there at the Lynx squad. Anyways, Dale Roswell finishes in 19th in the championship. Not sure what he's doing this uh, for next season. And Yamino Tenchi rounds out the top 20 in the championship. And here's one final look at the Independence Trophy standings for 2012. Gaspar de Souza of Portugal winning it for the Alex Harrison team. De Souza, we believe, has a drive lined up next year with Black Diamond Racing. So, for Lance Andrews and everyone at Channel 44, I'm Dan Mullen, and I'll see you next season.